The Arab Spring consists of a wave of protests that started in December 2010 in Tunisia, followed by other Arab countries. It was positively acclaimed as a social movement demanding an end to human rights violations, government corruption, and poverty. Yet so far, the outcome is largely contrary to what the original protesters intended. And since Christians are a minority in all Arab countries, they have been especially affected, and mostly for the worse. In Egypt, the revolution resulted in immediate new freedoms that Christians had not experienced before. However, after all of the upheavals of the last three years, there's no assurance the new freedoms will last. A revolution came to the church shaking it. A revolution shook all of us. They were sleeping and they shaked, huh? and they got, oh, oh and they got sleep again. First, I called it a miracle, so it was full of uh, flowers, so it's a spring. It's a godly spring, because I could feel it that uh, uh, the hand of God was in this revolution. Uh, but as you know, the Satan and the evil one don't want the, this good thing to be done, so he come and destroy it. Christians across the Middle East thought that new governments would provide them with human rights and the freedom to believe in Jesus. But as elections were held, new hardline Islamist political parties succeeded in getting into power. Under the old authoritarian rule, the position of Christians' minority rights was to a certain extent safeguarded. But the ousting of dictators like Colonel Gaddafi in Libya and Mubarak in Egypt left a power vacuum that's benefited Islamist fundamentalists and also criminal gangs. The anti-Christian sentiments of these groups has resulted in increased violence against both historical Christian minorities and new believers from Muslim backgrounds. The Arab Spring has also birthed the emergence of Islamic State, which continues to make international headlines for its barbarity of ethnic cleansing and the genocide of Christians in Syria and Iraq. Because of the ongoing chaotic and threatening situation across the region, many of the last of the Christian communities continue to leave their native countries en masse, which is a massive blow in the birthplace of their faith. Since the Syrian civil war began in 2011, at least 700,000 Christians have fled the country. We had prayed for Syria maybe from 40 or 50 years ago. Every time we ask, please, Lord, um, bring a revolution, a spiritual revolution, check, check the nest. But maybe we didn't think about how the Lord will happen this to his church.